All right, so today we're going to be looking at significant figures, and before we get into all the rules, we just want to show a few examples on why this is actually uh, important. So first of all, let's just take a circle, which has a diameter of D. And let's say this diameter here is 10.00 centimeters. Now this means, uh, for instance, we're just going to look at, well, what is the circumference of this circle? So the circumference, of course, is pi times the diameter. So if you go here and punch this into a calculator very easily, that's going to be pi times uh, 10.00. And that's, of course, going to give you 31.4159265 centimeters. Okay? And if you were doing this in a math class, that would be, you know, the correct answer, right? You would just punch that in and you know you're get a nice little gold star for you but let's just think about what this answer actually means uh, well right here that's going to be you know that's the millimeter right so that's 0.1 centimeters uh, 0 0.01 0 0.001 0 0.002 well, let's just use scientific notation here so that's going to be 10 to the minus 1 10 to the minus 2 10 to the minus 3 10 to the minus 4 10 to the minus 5 10 to the minus 6 10 to the minus 7 10 to the minus 8 so right there this is telling us that we have an accuracy of 10 to the minus eighth centimeters for this particular answer. And of course, just remembering uh, 10 to the minus two centimeters per every meter, that means that that's going to be, you know, on the order of 10 to the minus tenth meters. This is about the same size as an atom, okay? So this is atomic sizes here. Now, just think about this, you know, if you have a circle and you measure it with a, let's say, a ruler, and saying it's 10 centimeters, do you really know the circumference down to the size of an individual atom? Okay. Uh, let's take another little example. Uh, let's say you're going here and you are getting on a scale. Okay. And this scale here says you have a mass of 151 pounds. All right. And then let's say, so you're 151 um, pounds. And then let's say you go there and um, eat 1.37 um, pounds of food, and then you put on a watch, which let's say weighs 0 0.09 pounds, and then uh, let's say you put on your shoes, and those are another 2.1 pounds. So you add all these up, uh, 9 and 7, that's 16, carry the 1, that's going to be uh, 5, and then um, you got here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and a 1. Okay. So, does that mean that, you know, if you add up these values that your actual weight at the end of the day is going to be 154.56 pounds? Well, no, because first of all, you know, what's the accuracy of the scale? You know, this, for all you know, you might be 151.3 pounds, but, you know, the scale just goes 151 pounds. So, you know, is there any way you can actually have this particular accuracy uh, based upon, you know, this information? All right, so to answer those questions, we're going to be looking at these rules for significant figures here. Now, there's a couple of methods of doing this, and if you go to a more advanced class, you might be hearing about propagation of errors. This is a more accurate technique. Um, unfortunately, it is more mathematically involved, so we won't be going into this. But if you are interested, you know, I encourage you to, you know, go Google up uh, some processes for actually doing these things. But we're not going to get into uh, this in this class. So instead we're going to be using sig figs, which is a nice uh, rule of thumb. And what this is basically going to be telling us is how many useful, and by that useful I mean significant digits, are in the measurement. So just like we saw you know, with the uh, problem we just had, uh, we had you know, so many digits for our diameter of the circle and so many digits for our different weights. Um, so how many useful digits are in there in our measurements, and therefore how many useful digits are going to be in our final answer. So we'll be able to figure out uh, how we can actually do that. All right, so what this is basically going to do is just tell us how accurate this calculation is. So this way we don't have a billion extra digits on there that really don't mean anything. We just have the digits which you know are actually useful and actually are giving us an accurate representation of the you know accuracy of the measurement and the experiment itself. All right, so this first rule, and this is really an important one, is that when you're doing a calculation, so you're going to have all your values and then you're going to be plugging them into an equation. When you're doing the calculation, you do all the numbers, for, all your calculations first, and then you round to the correct number of sig figs. 
if you happen to go there and you know round after every little step in the calculation to like let's say three sig figs uh, what's you're going to happen is you're going to introduce rounding errors and depending on how long your calculation is these rounding errors can build up and you can end up you know being you know several percent off from the actual answer so you want to be very careful about that so you know if your calculator even though it's putting out a bunch of answers the numbers right there in the calculator you can just you know operate on it very quickly you don't have to worry about um, going there figure rounding to the correct number of sig figs and then going back and entering it into the calculation again so do all your calculations first and then do your rounding at the very end of the calculation on your final answer only so when we're going to be looking at these numbers uh, first of all um, in a number all the non-zero numbers are significant slash so is going to be your one two three four five six seven eight nine okay um, so these are going to be significant now we're going to be looking at zeros which are going to be uh, kind of pesky because they have their own little rules about them um, and we'll we'll examine that in a few minutes here. So first up, we're going to be looking at you know if we have a constant um, value in the uh, in the equation. So if we have a constant like a numeral, um, you know which is in the equation, so like uh, two or three or four or fractions, four thirds, one half, you know something like that. Um, pi, um, the speed of light, um, which is defined to be exactly um, a certain value. All of these have an infinite number of significant figures. All right? And when these values are in the calculation, they don't reduce the accuracy of the calculation. So for instance, if you're figuring out that the volume of a sphere is 4 thirds pi r cubed, well, the 4, the 3, and the pi in that equation are not going to impact the accuracy of the calculation at all. It's just going to be dependent on what your actual radius is. So conversion factors have an infinite number of sig figs. And by conversion factors, um, I mean things which are defined by definition to be a certain number. So for instance, 60 seconds per minute, that is defined that way. Um, and we can kind of think of it as there are 60.0000 and so on seconds per minute. So it's defined to be exactly 60 and therefore it has an infinite number of sig figs. Uh, 2.54 centimeters per inch. Again, this is by definition. And that really just is the same as saying 2.54 and then with a whole bunch of zeros right after it, centimeters per inch. 100 centimeters per meter. Again, this is by definition. You're never going to have to worry about is it 100.01 centimeters per inch because it's by definition. So whenever you're doing these conversions, all these conversion factors have absolutely no impact upon the number of sig figs in your final answer. The quantities we'll be looking at, it's the measured quantities which have uncertainty in them. So this is going to be the values that you might measure with a ruler or with a scale or if you're measuring in a burette, um, or you know a beaker, or an Erlenmeyer flask, or graduate cylinder, whatever, um, you're going to be measuring this stuff out, and it's going to have some small errors to it. On the other hand, if we're dealing with counted quantities, the counted is not the same thing as measured, right? So, for instance, if I say there are four people in a car, I can count them. I know there are exactly four people in that car it's not the same as a measurement. You know, if I was saying, well, these four people weigh 500 pounds, well, in that case, that would be a measured quantity because I, you know, had to actually physically put the people on the scale. But if I'm just counting how many people I actually have, well, that's an exact number. I'm not going to have any uncertainty. I'm not going to have four and a half people or maybe five or maybe three, depending on which way I count it. It's defined as exactly. So if you're counting something, that again has an infinite number of sig figs. If you're measuring something with you know, an apparatus that you're not actually counting the things, um, then there will be some uncertainty in there. Now I mentioned these zeros, and these are kind of a pain because they have different rules depending on where they're located in the number. So if we have a zero in the middle of the number, we call these captive zeros, uh, they're always going to be significant. So if I have here 20.01 minutes, that has four sig figs in it. If I have 201 minutes, that has three sig figs because the zero is in the middle there. All right, now these zeros at the beginning of a number, they are never going to be significant um, because they indicate the position of the decimal point. Because they're at the beginning, they're simply placeholder zeros. Uh, they're simply just there because they need to be there so you can actually read the number off. Okay, so that's all they're really doing there. So if I have there 0.00000023 seconds, there are only two sig figs in there because all those leading zeros are just holding the place, just letting you know where that 23 has to actually be. So there's only going to be two sig figs for that number. And equivalently, we can write this as 2.3 times 10 to the minus 8 seconds. Again, this will just have only two sig figs to it. 
Next up, we have 0 0.008007. Now we have those two zeros between the 8 and the 7. Those are my captive zeros, so those are going to be significant. And the 8 and the 7 are significant, so that's going to be four sig figs. Again, the 0 .00 you know, are just placeholder zeros, and they are not significant right there. And we could easily just equivalently write that as 8.007 times 10 to the minus third meters. Also, as you should note, um, the times 10 to the whatevers do not impact the number of sig figs. Okay, so if this is, you know, 10 to the minus 8, 10 to the minus 57, 10 to the 43rd, whatever, it does not impact it at all. All right, now the other thing is the zeros at the end, they are significant, but only if there is a decimal point actually there. So if I have 2.300 grams, that's going to be four sig figs. Um, but on the other hand, 2300 uh, grams, that has only two sig figs because there is no decimal point there. So the, the 2300 is you know, just the two and the three. That's the only significant numbers. The zero, zero are um, insignificant. And you might be wondering, well, why could that possibly happen? Well, you know, if you're just dealing with a scale, let's say that only has resolutions to hundreds of grams, um, that's a very possible answer. On the other hand, if I have 100 point grams, that is three sig figs. And notice that there is a decimal point to there. Um, if I have here 0 0.0012300, that has five sig figs. Those leading zeros are insignificant, and only the zeros on the end are actually the significant ones. Okay, if I have no decimal point, um, it's assumed that your zeros are not significant. So that's why the 2300 right there, it's assumed that those zero zeros are not significant on there. We only have the two sig figs. So for instance, 100 grams, even though you, you might just think, well, that has three sig figs to it, there's no decimal point, it's just going to have one sig fig for it. Now, this can help sometimes with uh, some confusion is if we use scientific notation. So, for instance, let's say I have 100 grams, but I want to represent this as having two sig figs of accuracy. Well, I can't exactly put the decimal point on the end because that would imply I have three sig figs of accuracy, and if I put it somewhere in the middle there, well, that's going to not be right because then it's not going to be 100. So we're going to use scientific notation, you know, for large numbers, you know, that have, you know, a limited amount of uncertainty to them. And uh, we can, you know, represent this very clearly using our scientific notation. Okay. So we have here, if I just have 1 times 10 to the 2 grams, that just has one sig fig, which should be very obvious. 1.0 times 10 to the 2 grams, that's two sig figs. 1.00 times 10 to the 2 grams, that's 3 sig figs, or 1.000 times 10 to the 2 grams, that's 4 sig figs. So you can very easily just write that out using scientific notation, and like we said, the times 10 to the 2 in this case is never going to impact the number of sig figs, so we don't have to worry about it. So it's just the leading numbers in there. And just a little pet peeve of mine, um, when you're writing these numbers out, um, occasionally people will write this as, you know, 1.00E, you know, capital E2, and you see this in spreadsheets, you know, where they represent, you know, the exponentials as, you know, the capital E. Just don't write it that way. That's, it's not very professional, and your math teachers won't be happy with you. So it, it's much more accurate to write it as times 10 to the number rather than the E2. It, it's just a sloppy, uh, sloppy form if you do that. Okay, so today we're going to be looking at uh, how the multiplication and division rules and finding out uh, how many sig figs we should actually get uh, for our final answers here. Okay, so we're just going to start off with something very simple. A nice little box. And let's say this box here has um, a length of 10.0 centimeters and on this side is 5.0 centimeters. So if we multiply this out, that's going to be 10.0 centimeters times 5.0 centimeters, which is going to be um, obviously 50 square centimeters. Now the question that we do have here is, well, how many sig figs do we actually need in this final answer? So we're going to figure out exactly, you know, is this going to be 50, 50.0, 50 50.00, you know, how many sig figs are, are actually um, going to be in this. Okay, first, before we just give you some rules, the reasoning behind these rules. All right, so what we have here is basically an implied uncertainty. So the 10.0 is really going to be the same thing as 10.0 plus or minus 0 0.1 centimeters. And the 5.0 is the same thing as 5.0 plus or minus 0 
centimeters. So if I just take these values here and just put it into an equation and do the multiplication out, we can see what our actual uncertainty would be. So this is going to be my 10.0 plus or minus 0.1 centimeters times uh, my 5.0 plus or minus 0.1 centimeters. So when I multiply this out, uh, my 10, and just for some clarity, I'm just going to take that, put my square centimeter there. So my 10 times my 5 is going to be my 50, obviously. And here, the 10 times the 0.1, that's going to be plus or minus 1. And then I multiply these two out, so that's going to be plus or minus 0 0.5. And then on the end, that's going to be plus or minus, oops, just a plus in this case, because a plus you know, times plus is obviously plus, minus times minus is um, also a plus. So it's going to be plus um, 0 0.01. And all this stuff here would be in square centimeters. So we can notice right here that these are the two contrib the, the contributions to my uncertainty here. Of these three contributions right here, this is going to be my greatest contribution to my uncertainty. So therefore, you know, I can write this as 50 plus or minus 1 square centimeters. Or since we're just going to be using you know, the implied uncertainty for these, this is equivalent to writing 50 point square centimeters or 5.0 times 10 to the first square centimeters. So this is what you know, we're doing here is basically by using this implied uncertainty figuring out you know, what our actual uncertainty is. Now if we're doing propagation of errors which is the more advanced technique for this you know, we would find out exactly what you know, these values would be but you know, for our purposes you know, this is what you know, we're actually interested in. So let's say um, I'm dealing with in this case 3.00 times 10 to the third and we're not going to worry about you know the particular units we're just multiplying the, the numbers out times uh, 0 0.015 uh, in this case so we multiply that out and that's just going to be equal to 45 okay now again we're just going to you would use that same implied uncertainties so this is going to be 3.00 plus or minus 0 0.01 times 10 to the third, because remember there's no uncertainty in those things, uh, times my 0 0.015 plus or minus 0 0.001. Okay, so if I multiply all of these things out again, uh, my 3 times my 0 0.015 is going to be 0 0.0 5 and now plus or minus 3 times that so that's going to be 0 0.003 and now the 0 0.01 times the 0 0.015 so that's going to be plus or minus make sure I get my number, right number of zeros that's 0 0.00015 and then here multiplying these two out that's just going to be a plus 0 0.12123 one um, over here. Okay, now again, oh, and then all of this multiplied by times 10 to the third. Okay, so if you look here at what the biggest contribution is, that's going to be this value right here. All these other ones, see that's 0 0.003, that thing's smaller, this is way, way smaller. So right here, this is going to be our biggest contribution. So this is going to be now 45, 0.045 times 10 to the third, that's the same thing as, you know, 45 plus or minus 3 in that case. Uh, this is bigger than our one contribution than we were normally talking about, but, you know, again, rule of thumb for the sig figs. So, you know, we would basically just write this as um, 45 um, in that case. All right, so this brings us to our summary, is that uh, for multiplication and division, the number of sig figs in the result equals the number in the least precise measurement used in the calculation. So here we have two examples. Uh, 6.38 times 2.0. So we can see the 2.0 has the least number of sig figs. So we multiply that out, we get 12.76. 
and since we're just rounding this to sig figs, it becomes 13. In the next one, we have 16.84 divided by 2.13. The 2.13 has the least number of sig figs. It has three, the other one has four. So the, we are only going to round to three sig figs in our final answer. So the final will be 7.91. All right, so next we're going to be looking at the addition and subtraction operations. So let's assume I have here um, 5.0, and I'm adding to this 15, and I'm adding to this 8.123. So of course we add this up, that's going to be 3, 2, 1, point, 5 plus 5, that's going to be um, now an 8, carry the 1, that's going to be 28.123. Now, how many sig figs do I actually need in this final answer here? Okay, so if we write this as using our implied uncertainties, so this is going to be the same as 5.0 plus or minus 0 0.1. Uh, this is going to be 15 plus or minus 1. And then my 8.123 plus or minus 0 0.001. So if I add this up, well, obviously this is just going to be my 28.123, but here my plus or minus, look at what is actually the dominating factor right here. That's going to be my 1. So because this is going to be my dominating factor, all this 0.123 is just kind of lost um, in the noise, so we can't write this down and say it's significant. So therefore our final answer is just going to be 28 because the uncertainty in this is going to be plus or minus 1, so there's no reason to have that 0.123 there because it just kind of gets lost in the noise. Um, as another example, and this you know, it seems very counterintuitive, but let's say I have a car which weighs 2,300 pounds, and I add to this car a 40-pound bag of birdseed. Now, your normal way of adding this up, and like you were taught in grade school, you would say, okay, that's going to be 2340 pounds. But remember, for our implied uncertainties here, this is saying the same thing as 2300 plus or minus 100. And then for my 40, well, let's just say that's 40 point pound bag of uh, birdseed because they usually don't sell it plus or minus 10 pounds. The consumer will be very angry with that. Um, but let's just say here we have uh, 40. Um, plus or minus 1. So therefore when we add this up that's going to be our 2340 but it's still going to be plus or minus um, 1, well, 101 in that case but it's basically 100 uh, pounds. So therefore the actual answer that you would write for this and it seems very very counterintuitive is just a 2300 pounds because you know, if you think about this, you know, the reason that your car weight might not be that accurate is because, you know, the scale for weighing a car might not be that accurate. So it can only display, you know, 2,100, 2,200, 2,300, 2,400 pounds. You put a 40-pound bag of birdseed in there, it's still just going to be 2,300 pounds because you haven't had enough weight in there to, you know, actually kick it over the edge. Now, on the other hand, let's say I go here and say 2,300 and I put in a 40 point pound bag of bird seed. I add another 40 pound bag of bird seed in this. Well, it's going to be 2380. Well, now we're going to round this up. So this is going to be 2400 pounds. Okay. All right. So to summarize, when we're dealing with addition and subtraction, the number of sig figs in the result depends on the location of the least significant digit. All right. So here we have a few examples. The red numbers represent where our cutoff is actually going to be. So for the first example, we have 6.8 plus 11.934. Now the 8 is going to be the digit that determines where our cutoff is because everything in the hundredths and thousandths place to the right of that 8 um, is just not going to be significant. So the 8 in our tenths place determines that, and we're going to round it to uh, 18.7. In the next line, we have 1454 plus 200. Well, in this case, remember those, those following zeros there aren't significant since we don't have a decimal point. So the 2 in that case is going to be the digit I'm going to worry about. And everything in the tens of the ones place is just going to get dropped. So we're going to get 1654, but we round that to 1700. In the next line, uh, we have now 210. So still that 0 is not going to be significant 
in the ones place, but the uh, one in the tens place will be. So again, we'll just round that to be 1660. And then in the final line, we have 1454 plus 210.0. Well, in this case, now we have extra significant digits of 210, but now my uh, least digit is going to be in the ones place, so we're going to drop that off, and we're going to get rid of the tens place on that. And we're just going to have 1664 in that case. Okay, so we've done addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division, and you know each of those has their own little rules to them. But now, what are we going to do if we're actually dealing with combined operations? So we're dealing with something that has you know addition or subtraction included with the multiplication or division. So we have to see how um, we can actually combine these things. And the basic rule is that we're going to be looking at this in the order of operations. So it really depends on how the equation is actually written out. All right, so for a couple of examples here, um, we'll see here, let's say we just have 1.07 minus 0.8826 and we divide that by 0.762 okay so what we're gonna have here is first of all we're gonna do the subtraction step and then we're going to do the division step so if we do the subtraction we get here 0.1874 and then on the bottom we're still leaving this the same so that's 0.762 now, when we did the subtraction, remember our rule for determining uh, where the number of sig figs is going to lie. Well, right here, this is going to be in our hundredths place. This goes you know, out to the ten thousandths place. So this is going to be the location of our least significant digit. So right here, this top answer in our numerator is going to have two sig figs. The bottom one is still going to have three. So even, and just remember, when you're writing all this out, you're still going to be including all of this extra information. Even though you might say, well, it's two sig figs, I should round it to 0.19. Don't do that. You want to do all your calculations first and then do the rounding at the end. But basically right here, this just has two sig figs and this part on the bottom here has three sig figs. So when we go through and do this, we're going to get, uh, what was it, two point, oops, no, zero point two four five nine and keeps on going. And from our rules of uh, multiplication and division, this is going to be the one with the least number of sig figs, so this is going to be 2 on the top. So therefore, I'm going to you know, truncate it right there, and this is going to round to be 0 0.25. All right, another example here. Uh, let's say we have uh, 0 0.91 plus 1.2 plus 8.4 divide that by 3.700. Okay, so first of all, we're gonna again, you know, do the addition step first up here. So that's gonna be 10.51. And then on the bottom, this is still gonna be 3.700. And again, looking at where our sig figs lie for this, well here, that's going out to the hundredths. This is in the tenths, that's in the tenths. So therefore, this is only gonna be out to the tenths. And this up here is only gonna have three sig figs. Um, down here we have four sig figs. So when I do my division, um, I'm going to wind up with this three sig figs in that case. So this is going to become uh, 2.8405, blah, blah, blah. And when we round that out to our third sig fig right here, this is just going to become 2.84. Um, another one. <clears throat> so let's say I have here 82.7 divided by, uh, was it, 0.18. And then I'm gonna add on to that uh, 114.25. So in this case, um, order of operations first, we're gonna you know, do the division and then we're gonna do our um, addition here. So this is going to work out to be 459.44, blah, 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 plus 114.25. Okay, and then when you add these two things up, we're going to get 573.69, continuing onward. Okay, so this first one right here, since we're doing the division, that has three sig figs. This has two sig figs. So therefore, this answer is only going to have two sig figs. So this is just going to be right there for two sig figs. All right, well, it's going to be two sig figs in this case. But again, we're going to look at which spot is, because remember when we're doing the addition or subtractions, we're looking where the location is for that last digit. And since this is going to be in the tens place, that means that this is going to be rounded to only the tens place out here. So that means that this is going to become 
570 in that case. Or you could write that as 5.7 times 10 to the 2. Um, either way, you know, would convey the same, uh, the same answer. All right, and then for our last little example here, and hopefully this will, you know, be enough that you get the, the, the gist of what we're doing here. Uh, let's say we have uh, 28.2 times 10 to the minus 16th, and we're multiplying by the inverse of 298 minus 1 over 316. Okay, uh, first up, um, right here, the one on the top, that's just going to be a constant because all I'm doing is I'm taking the inverse of these numbers um, instead of, you know, taking, you know, a measured value of 1 and dividing by 298. This is a counted number, it's just the inverse. So in this case, the top number right here, uh, that has an infinite number of sig figs in both of these cases right here. So that, those have an infinite number of sig figs, they're not going to um, impact this at all. So if I write this out again, that's going to be 28.2 times 10 to the minus 16. And then 1 over 298 is 0 0.000. 33557, dot, 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 minus, and then 1 over 316 is 0.00316456, and it continues on. All right, so first of all, I'm going to do this subtraction over here. So that is going to be 28.2 times 10 to the minus 16th, and then when I subtract these out, that's going to be 0.0000. .000 because this, these first threes, these both subtract out. Uh, 191148, and so on. Okay, so it's a little hard to, to see this right here, but um, over here, these both have three sig figs, right? So these both have three sig figs. So therefore, both of these numbers here should have three sig figs. So this is where these values are going to end. And then when I subtract these two off, this is going to be this number. Because remember, those threes cancel out. And then the three minus, the 35 minus the 16 gives us this 19 uh, value we have over here. And then the 1148, well, that's just continuing onward. So this right here is only going to have two sig figs, and this here is going to have three sig figs. So if we subtract these two numbers out, or I should say multiply these two numbers out here, we're going to get uh, 5.39 times 10 to the minus 19th, but again, only to two sig figs. So this is going to be this value right here. So that is going to go to 5.4 times 10 to the minus 19th in that case. All right, so hopefully that will give you the, the gist of what is actually going on for these mixed operations here. Okay, so just a few notes on rounding. Now you probably covered this in grade school, but we just want to summarize everything just so everyone's on the same page here. All right, if the leftmost digit removed is less than 5, then you leave the preceding number alone. So, for instance, if we have 7.248, and let's say we're just rounding this to two sig figs, uh, since the uh, 4 is less than 5, um, that's just going to become 7.2. If this leftmost digit that's removed is greater than or equal to 5, then you round the preceding number up by 1. So here we have the 7.2. 4.736, we round that up, that becomes 4.74, because of course the 6 is greater than, than the uh, 5. And if we're doing this to 3 sig figs. Uh, here, if we're doing this to 2 sig figs, the 2.371 becomes 2.4. Alright, now if the last digit is exactly 5, um, you'll round this up, it'll be even, and leave alone if it will be odd. Now, what I mean exactly 5 means that it becomes exactly 5, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, you know, as far as, you, as the eye can see. This rarely, rarely happens, so I'm not going to give any, like, trick questions on this. But uh, the rule for this is that if we have, let's say, 4.7350, that would be rounding up to become 4.74. So now we're rounding this up so it becomes even. And here, if it's 4.7450, it also is 4.74. So whatever happens there, you're always just going to round this to the even uh, number. But if this is not exactly the 50, um, for instance, if it's 4.7451, then it rounds up to become 4.75. So it's only in the case where you happen to have you know, exactly a 5 with all zeros after there, which is very rare to actually happen. So don't really worry about that so much. 
Okay, and coming back to the question that we started off at the beginning of this whole video half an hour ago, uh, you know, how many sig figs would we have? Well, right here, remember we measured this to four sig figs, and of course, it, pi has an infinite number, right? So that has an infinite number of sig figs. My diameter here had four sig figs, so therefore, you know, I would actually write my answer out to be instead just using these four sig figs. So therefore, my circumference in this case would be 31.4 and rounding up to two centimeters. And then down here, uh, remember we're looking for the uh, last digit that has in common. So right here, uh, that is going to be this digit in the ones place. So this means that we're just going to round this over here to 155 pounds in that case to the correct number of sig figs.